All right, I want to share some comments about uh, Medjugorje, and I'd be interested to kind of hear what you guys have to say about this too, but I've been kind of going under or going into a rabbit hole of Medjugorje stuff. I'm not going to give you the whole backstory, but the point was I came from both sides, or I read a lot of negative literature, a lot of negative stuff, and then a lot of positive stuff. And I think if you're even just if you're just trying to get into learning what it is, you either kind of fall in one of those camps because if you just start like Google searching it or you just do a YouTube search, you're going to see some pro Medjugorje stuff and you're going to see a lot of negative stuff. And so right away, you're probably I just like judging people. You know that they, there's an old saying where you judge someone in the first seven seconds. I think that happens a lot with Medjugorje, where right away you're either your meters are going off and you're going to be more apt to kind of listen to the argument that you're more likely to be to li- that you're kind of initially geared towards than kind of l- kind of listening to everything and kind of making your own decision. Uh, and that was kind of how I felt. I think initially I I saw some of the positives and I thought you know this doesn't seem you know it seems too too good to be true basically that there's these multiple visionaries all hearing different things almost on a daily basis. And the, I, I forget how many visions or um, kind of writings they have down from the Blessed Mer- Blessed Mother, supposedly, I think it's like 40,000 um, messages, not to mention the 10 secrets. Uh, a lot of things have been happening there, basically. They're supposedly been happening. Then you have the other side saying that it's all demonic, it's all evil, uh, don't trust anything that comes out of there. Then you have people kind of in the middle but even if you look at some of the positive stuff, you'll scroll down and see, okay, there's a lot of people saying, you know, stay away, stay away. And if you're kind of good hearted, you're going to think, well, what are they talking about? And you start looking at it. I would say I'd, I'd recommend both people. I'd recommend both sides read and look into both sides of the literature. Cause I can tell you right now, being someone who totally had wanted nothing to do with it and actually got very defensive when I met people who were really pro uh, you know, I just, I didn't like it for some for whatever reason. And then I got to know people, uh, long story short, have been there double digit times, uh, ha- happened to know a lot of the characters in this whole Medjugorje saga. Um, I gave them the benefit of the doubt. I kind of started reading some of the books they recommended. I, I went through about three books within a two week time period. And, you know, I've, I'm being aware that, you know, a book, just like sitting and watching a documentary, you know, you can get in, engrossed in the book and kind of be taken away uh, and kind of believe one side versus the other. But I can tell you that if you hear a lot of the negative stuff and then you hear the positive stuff and then you actually know people that have been there that actually know some some insider stuff that I don't really want to say because it's kind of damning information, you can kind of understand that there is kind of, there is a, there's a middle ground that kind of gets woven through this whole thing. But I will say that I'm leaning more towards uh, I don't want to say full on. Basically, I'm leaning more towards the acceptance side than I was hard the negative, which is a, it's a huge step for, further. But I want to th- say a couple things. You know, what is it that really rubs people, especially with a, the traditional Catholic group versus, or I'd say, kind of not just traditional Catholics, the people that are very kind of orthodox or very, um, which is what I consider myself to be. One, just really respect the, the formal teachings of the church versus. Medjugorje people tend to, and this is a general statement, I don't know if this is even fair to say, tend to be more um, that Vatican II kind of new church, church of nice type of stuff, very all accepting. It's just, you know, preach the gospel of love, don't talk about anything that's damning type of stuff. And I think you kind of have that split. And I think a lot of that does come down to one of the big obstacles, I think, when you're reading Medjugorje books and literature and messages you start to think, well, if you're coming from a traditionalist background and you're really learning and accepting uh, and, like I said, do respect and also practice and shape your life around traditional teach church teachings, when you hear the messages of Medjugorje, and not all of them, because I got to say, I have not looked at, I probably haven't looked at, you know, more, more than 20% at least, because there's a lot, but I've seen a lot of them that, or at least some, a lot of excerpts, but still not as nearly as exhaustive as the total number. That you start to think, well, if it's if it's all just about love and you know respect and caring for other people, and that's the message Christ wants you to say, which I'm I'm understanding that's not the only thing they say in Medjugorje because they talk a lot about fasting, reading the scripture, um, being essentially a good Catholic, converting in the sense of true conversion, meaning that you are actually living the faith. That um, you know, from a traditional standpoint, you start thinking, well. You know, why isn't the Blessed Mother saying this? Why isn't she telling people to come to the fullness of the Catholic Church? Why is it make? Why does it seem like she's saying that all religions, all religions are equal? Uh, if 
if there is such thing as a hell and people are going to hell uh, and there's purgatory, which she has talked in a couple messages about, why isn't it more of an, an immediate response? Like, you know, go to church, go to the sacraments, you know, basically do all the time is limited. And you got to do this now versus some of these more loving, accepting types of messages. And I think, you know, when I really started looking into it, one thing that helped a lot for me, and again, this isn't me trying to justify thinking that Magic Mes- is right, but I had to play devil's advocate. I used to say, like, look, all these messages aren't necessarily saying that. Let's look at what is, and that's the other thing too. If you look at all the messages, you're going to see a lot of like kind of subtle, subtle things that don't seem like, oh, maybe the blessed mother wouldn't, would, wouldn't say this. I, I would think she would say it's something else. And that's kind of right away you got to be careful because now it's like, you know, who are you to kind of start assuming you, now you're dictating what you want to hear. And that's not what we want, we're trying to do either. But we're, we're, I think what we're trying to say is does it match up with the Bible and what the blessed mother has said before? And I do think that when you start taking some of the passages and sentences uh, out from other apparitions like Lourdes and Akita, um, F- Fatima even as well, and you juxtapose them with what is said in Medjugorje, I do think they are kind of similar. There's not some grandiose statements. They can sound kind of simple, uh, simple but very profound things that I think do play off when you actually follow them. But let me just tackle one thing because I don't want to go too long with this. The biggest one is, if you go on this website, this was recommended to me. It's Medjugorje uh, dash Apologia. Apologia. Um, I'm probably saying that wrong. It probably means Medjugorje Apologetics is probably what this is standing for. I just probably butchered that. But um, basically, there's there's some, some stuff in here that kind of goes over some of the uh, critiques. And when I first was even skeptical enough, this was shown to me. And I, even when I looked at it, I was like, I don't necessarily, this, I still don't want to believe it, but you know, when I was, even when I was shown this passage right here, you know, this is the one that gets poked at a lot that says the lady uh, said there's all faiths are equal. If we start dissecting this, I think this is, I don't think this is really that bad and I can kind of understand that. So it says, this is again, supposedly come from the blessed mother. Tell this priest, tell everyone that it is you who are divided on earth. The Muslims and the Orthodox for the same reason as Catholics are equal before my son and me. You are all my children. I would say right away that hard stop. And people shouldn't have an issue with that, right? We're all children of God. We're all created by God. So I think nothing, that's essentially what's being said here. Certainly all religions are not equal, but all men are equal before God, as St. Paul says. Uh, so again, nothing really bad here. I'm not saying all religion. she's not basically saying it. All religions are not equal, but again, all men are equal does not suffice to belong to the Catholic Church to be saved, but it is necessary to respect the commandments of God in following one's conscience. Now that's that that's a hard line for people, right? It does not suffice to, to belong to the Catholic Church to be saved. Now here or right here, it does not suffice to belong. So it doesn't, it's basically what it's saying, it doesn't mean that just because you belong to the Catholic Church that you're saved. Even though we say there's no salvation outside the Catholic Church, which is you know, what the church teaching is saying, it's saying, you know, basically, there's a lot. This is like we're, t- we're talking about fake Catholics, right? That it's not just enough to say that you belong to the church. Like, I'm a member of the church, uh, right? You can't technically be a member of the church in good standing, as I've said in previous videos, uh, if you don't respect the commandments of God and, again, in following one's conscience. So I think that's what that's saying there. And I think, you know, if I first read this not necessarily thinking about it really quickly off the cuff, I would have got upset. But if you kind of read it slowly... That's my, what it's, to me, it, it's saying in there. And by the way, I don't want to go on a whole side tangent, but the other thing that people have discussed and even the visionaries have said is that uh, these are fairly, very, fairly accurate, but there is maybe some little bit of a loss in translation in when they convert these things with their translators, whatever. So we'll continue here. Those who are not Catholics are no less creatures made in the image of God and destined to rejoin someday the house of the Father. Uh, okay, so again, I'm going to refer to this that I don't necessarily think that this person is saying that all people go to heaven or that all people are just going to be uh, equal. I think this is what the catechism kind of closely says too, that if you're of good conscience, you believe in God and you, uh, again, maybe you didn't know the fullness of the church, you weren't taught these things, maybe you weren't taught anything with the Catholic church, maybe you are just brought up just pure Protestant and you had no exposure. You know, At the end, you're going to have to be in unity with the Catholic church. That's what the catechism says. 
And, you know, there's like going to be a cleansing process again and, and destined to rejoin someday. I think that is really into purgatory. And again, the second coming of Christ. Salvation is available to everyone without exception. I think that's true, right? I think we all would say it. I don't think any Catholic would say, you know, there's no salvation available to anybody. That doesn't negate the part of there's no salvation outside of the Catholic Church. It's just saying salvation is open. Uh, it's those who are going to choose to accept it. Only those who refuse God deliberately are condemned, right? And I think that's actually pretty close to the to the dog what the dog in the church essentially says. And there's a lot of nuance and a lot of context in just that sentence right there, because uh, that's ultimately what we are saying, right? If you are starting, if you are aware of these things, if you are to, if someone is telling you, you know what, uh, abortion, this is why abortion is wrong. Uh, God, this is you know very clearly straight in the Bible, and you choose to say, you know what, I, I see that it's there. I believe that maybe, you know, I believe that, you know, the church teaches this. I can see your morals. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway because of my own selfishness. That's the example of many examples where you choose to do something that you think is right, even though you can accept and are aware, well aware that God says otherwise. That is, uh, you know, that's the hard, you know, mortal grave sin area right there. All right. You're, you're putting yourself as your own God, basically. And I think that's what this sentence is, is saying. To him who has been given little, little will be asked for. To whoever, to whoever, whomever has been given much, again to Catholics, very much will be required. Again, I don't think there's. I did a whole video on this earlier, not even thinking about this message. And I'm the gospel is that there's not, not, the uh, New Testament message is actually escaping me right now. Something that's very similar to this. Uh, but basically, you know, I, I think this is totally true. We, If you're a Catholic, you have a responsibility. And God help you if you are properly catechized and you were told these, this information and you reject it. That is, uh, that is the, these are the people we really have to pray pray for. And again, I said that in an earlier video when I discussed this um, earlier, that it's almost better to be naive and ignorance is bliss type of thing uh, instead of being... Uh, told what the Catholic Church teaches, and that's why I, I, I do that all the time with my family. I teach them something uh, that I've learned about the Catholic faith that they were not aware of. I think these are Catholics, and uh, I almost feel bad telling them because I'm like, you know what? I just warned you. Now you have to. Now you take it seriously. It is God alone, in His infinite justice, who determines the degree of responsibility and pronounces judgment. Right? Uh, that's hard teaching. Right? You, you don't you don't judge people. Uh, we can educate people. We can warn people. We aren't there to judge anybody. So, continuing, all religions are similar before God. This is the this is the hard part right here. God rules over them just like a sovereign over a kingdom, over his kingdom. In the world, all religions are not the same because people have not compiled them, compiled with the commandments of God. They reject and disparage them. So, I think what they're saying is that religions in of themselves are similar in the sense that they're all just us feeble, weak-minded men trying to, to the best of our ability, live some form of practice and whatever, whatever that is. I mean, you know, we basically, you know, we can, someone can be a Wicca or someone just wor worships some sort of tree in their backyard. Uh, could be very similar in the way that we are sitting there and worship and we follow some sort of worship, you know, to our traditional liturgy, or I would just say, you know, if even if you're atheist, and I would say right now in current time, if people say they're atheists or people have no religion, but yet the religion of the day is the, uh, all the, just basically their politics is their religion, right? Their ideology is their, uh, liberal ideology is their new religion. Uh, that is kind of similar and is basically that man is going to have religion there. However, what is distinctive and what makes them, you know, what makes the religion stand out really is God rules over them just like a sovereign kingdom. So in the world, all religions are not the same because people have not compiled them with the commandments of God. Uh, they reject and disparage them. So assuming we are, again, good Catholics, we are a distinction from that because we are compiling our religion to the commandments and teachings of truth, moral truth, again, the Logos truth. Um, that is found in the Bible. So I think when you actually really look at this and break this one down, there's a lot of other things to kind of pack, unpack. But I think if you take it sentence by sentence versus if you just read this top thing, especially this top line, people might glaze over that and say, okay, 
she just basically said uh, Muslims worship the same God and, and they're equal. I don't think that's what's really happening here. I think that's the message that's there. I think the overall message, which I think can be good, is that you know you have to un- underlining all this stuff is love and acceptance and respect and not judging people because you know uh, <laughs> you're going to be judged. You're no better than them. You're just a man. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it's going to be salvation and aligning your life, aligning this equality that we have as just being humans, feeble humans. That's the only thing we're really equal on. Uh, but aligning these things to the commandments and teachings of the church, that's what separates us uh, as far as being one being um, better than the other. As Ed has said up over here, that religions are not essentially equal, as she said in that sentence up there, or supposedly said, depending on how you want to when you want to take that. So that's just me kind of going through that one part that I think it's a, is a hard part for a lot of people to kind of digest and dissect. Certainly there's other things actually we could talk about. There's a lot more I could talk about and then maybe I'll make another measure gory video about at least my kind of uh, interpretations in the way I've been kind of going through this. Happy to hear any comments. I'm not saying this is uh, totally right or that, you know, for all we know, somebody, a priest or a Franciscan priest could have just made this up and throw us on a piece of paper. But, What I'm going to say, one last thing, is that if someone takes this line in this sentence and takes it another way, which is totally possible, that this is just the religion of peace, that all religions are equal, we can all just, you know, quote unquote, coexist, that's, you know, that's bad too, than, you know, openly rejecting this and saying something else. Uh, Taking this and running with it the other way is just as uh, as dangerous and just as uh, problematic as someone who is looking at this and just saying, well, this is the whole thing. We should throw this whole thing out. So that's it. Any questions, comments, we'd love to hear them. Thanks.